Hey guys and welcome back. In this tutorial, we will walk you through one of the easiest ways to try out Ubuntu desktop on a virtual machine. Now this virtual box is a general purpose virtualizer that is available across Linux, Mac OS as well as Windows. And uh, it's a great way to experience Ubuntu regardless of your current operating system. So by the time we are finished with this tutorial, you will learn how to install and configure VirtualBox, how to import an Ubuntu image, how to run a virtual instance of a Ubuntu desktop, and then further configuration options that are available in the VirtualBox. Now without any further ado, let's start by downloading and installing VirtualBox. So for that, I'll just open the browser and I'll search for Oracle VirtualBox. And then just open the first link that is Oracle VirtualBox. And then we can just click on download VirtualBox 6.1. This is the latest version as of now. Then among the platform packages available, you can choose according to your operating system or according to your host operating system. For me, since I'm running Windows 11, I'm going to choose Windows host and then just let the VirtualBox download. And if you have already downloaded and installed VirtualBox, then you can skip this part. And let's start by downloading Ubuntu. So just search Ubuntu download. And then the first link that is available in the search, that is download Ubuntu desktop. Let's just click on it and uh, we will be welcomed by the home page of ubuntu from here we can download the ubuntu desktop if you want you can just click on ubuntu desktop home page and uh, in this page you can have a look at all the features that are available in the ubuntu anyways let's just come back to the download page and uh, one very important point before we start installing the ubuntu we have to take care of the recommended system requirements in many of the videos that i have gone through in the youtube the tutor or the instructor they tend to forget about the recommended system requirements like in one of the videos while the guy was installing ubuntu in the virtual box he just allocated one gigabyte of ram and uh, while allocating the hard disk, he only allocated 10 gigabytes of hard disk. He was just doing it randomly. He didn't pay attention to the recommended system requirements which have been mentioned by the developers. So in such cases, even though the installation will succeed, but after we start using the operating system, after we start using the virtual machine, we are going to face a lot of problems later. The problems might be related to the performance or in some cases the problems even led to the failure of the system like when i was doing some testing by allocating only one gigabyte of ram and 10 gigabyte of hard disk space even though the installation was complete i was greeted with the login page in ubuntu but as soon as i enter my credentials in the login page the the guest machine or the virtual machine it kept restarting so it will again come back to the login page and then I'll again enter my credentials and then again the system will restart. It kept going on and on. So, so I'll just suggest to stick with the recommended system requirements. So while installing the Ubuntu, I'll make sure that I allocate at least 4 gigabyte of RAM and 24 gigabyte of hard disk space. So let's start the download. All right. So once the download is over, you can open the directory where you have downloaded the virtual box. So I'll just start with the installation. Click on next. Now in this dialog box, you can choose which features of the virtual box you want to be installed. If you're not sure about these features, you can just let all of them be installed. Also, you can change the location in which the virtual box is going to be installed. For me, my C drive is on solid state drive. So I'm going to let the virtual box install in the C drive because of performance. For you, you can choose to change the location from here. Otherwise, just click on next. 
then again just click on next let all the tick marks be there all right and uh, a small warning while the oracle virtual box is going to install on your system it's going to reset your network connection temporarily for a few seconds so if you are doing something important you can pause that or you can finish whatever you are doing with the network and then start the installation and then just click yes all right now we just have to start the installation all right then just click on finish and it will start up the virtual box all right then from the available options we have preferences import export new add since we are starting with the new installation so i'll just click on new all right and there are two modes to create a virtual machine either guided mode or expert mode in the guided mode we won't be given all the options in the same dialog box but in the expert mode we are made to choose all the options at once like i can specify the name the type the version of the operating system as well as the memory size that has to be allocated to the operating system and then i can choose whether i want to create a hard disk by hard disk i mean a virtual hard disk or i can choose an existing virtual hard disk in the guided mode also we are going to choose all these options but they'll come one by one so i'll start with the expert mode it's easier to work with then in the name if you specify ubuntu then the type as well as the version will be selected automatically by the virtual box and uh, then we can change the location of the machine now don't get confused with this location and the location that was shown during the time of installation of virtual box during the time of virtual box the option to change the location was for the installation of the virtual box now this machine folder this specifies the location where we want to save our virtual machine and we are going to create multiple virtual machines so the chances are that you might want to install those virtual machines in your hard disk and not in the solid state drive to save some space so i'll just change this location then coming to the memory size as i have explained earlier i'm going to specify 4 gigabytes of memory size here because that is the recommended system requirement of ubuntu all right then i'll let this option be ticked that is create a virtual hard disk now and then click on create all right now we can specify which type of hard disk you want to create now these options depend on your usage if you have to use your virtual machines with other virtual boxes in that case you might want to change these options but in our case i'll just let it be virtual box disk image and then i will change this file size to 25 gigabytes and then we have the option to choose the storage on physical hard disk whether you want it to be fixed size or you want it to be dynamically allocated in case of dynamically allocated virtual box will not occupy 25 gigabytes of space in your hard disk right away instead it is going to occupy the space as and when it is required the trade-off here is the performance obviously your performance is going to be slower than the fixed size but in case of fixed size your 25 gigabytes of hard disk will be utilized right away so i'll just use dynamically allocated to save space all right then i'll click on create now you can go through all the settings of your system and you can see that the video memory is only 16 megabytes we want to change that and you can have a look at all the other settings and then click on settings and then coming to the display tab which is on the left side now i'll just increase this video memory to 128 megabyte this is going to enhance the performance all right then click on system tab and then on processor tab and here i'll just increase the number of processor i'll just make it two this is also going to increase the performance of our virtual machine and if you want you can have a look at all of the settings under different tabs but if you're not sure about those settings i'll suggest you to refrain from changing them you can just have a look at them but don't change them unnecessarily then click on ok and finally we are ready to start our virtual machine all right now at the beginning we will be prompted to choose the startup disk or the disk image of ubuntu operating system that we have downloaded earlier 
so here i'll just click on this small icon and then from here we have to add the disk image so i'll click on add and then just browse through your computer to the part where you have downloaded the ubuntu disk image all right then just click on choose and then finally we are ready to start now this will start the installation of ubuntu then we can just hit enter on try or install ubuntu all right so the installation has finally started all right now we will be shown the welcome page in this page you can choose the languages or you can choose to try ubuntu this will not install ubuntu so if you click on try ubuntu you can try ubuntu operating system and the ubuntu is going to run directly from your disk image but we are going to install the ubuntu so i'll just click on install then from this page you can choose the keyboard layout so i'll just choose indian then on the right side i'll choose india with english all right you can choose the keyboard layout according to your needs then click on continue now what apps would you like to install to start with if you want to save time and memory space you can just choose minimal installation in that case only the essential and the basic utilities will be installed along with the web browser and just untick this download updates while installing ubuntu this is going to speed up your installation process and then you can take care of the updates later click on continue then here we have to choose the installation type now if you want to erase the disk and install ubuntu right away then don't change the option but in case you want to create or resize partitions or choose multiple partitions for ubuntu that also you can do from here you can just click on something else and then work out with your partitions but for me i'll just let it be on erase disk and install ubuntu and then i'll just click on install now all right then finally we can just click on continue and then on this page we have to specify our location since i'm in india so kolkata has been selected automatically this will be used to identify your local standard time you can just click on the country in which you are right now or in the time zone of your country and then click continue now in this page it's asking about your personal information so you can just type your name then type the name of your computer all right then you have to choose a username then just specify password now if you want to log in into ubuntu automatically without the need to type in the password you can select the first option that is login automatically or you can just let it be in the default option that is require my password to log in that is more secure actually then just click on continue and the installation will begin now the system will prompt you to click on restart now you can just click on restart now and the system will restart please remove the installation medium then press enter if you want to check if the disk image of ubuntu is, is still mounted you can just click on this devices in the menu bar and then you can observe that remove disk from virtual drive option is grayed out which means it is inactive and it, it cannot be clicked that means there is a no disk image being mounted right now but even then if you want to make sure just click on choose create a disk image and here you can see that none of the disk is mounted right now so just click on leave empty and finally you can press enter all right now the installation is complete and you will be greeted by the login page where you can click on your username and then enter your password hit enter and ubuntu is going to boot up and you will be presented with the desktop now there are many other things that you may want to change or edit or add like for example you may want to install the guest editions so that we can change the resolution of our virtual machine 
and also we can enable the shared clipboard or the shared location so we are going to see how we can do that in the subsequent videos and this is all for this video if you like the video don't forget to hit like button and subscribe to the channel thanks for watching